Hello everyone, this is Revati for Cat Scrappiness. Today is all about using your cover plate dies. Now cover plate dies include any of your background dies that either create a pierce pattern or cuts holes on your cardstock panel. So any of your cover plate dies would work for this technique. I really love when I find new ways uh, and techniques to use up my crafty supplies. I have a couple of cards where I show you some unique techniques to use the cover plate dies and get full use of these huge background dies. Well, before we get started, I would love for you to subscribe to the Cat Scrappiness channel and make sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time we post a new video. I would also like to mention that the products that I'll be using today are all linked down in the description box below. Let's get started. Well, let us first take a look at our cover plate die. This is the diamond wire and wood grain frame die by Cat Scrappiness. It measures 5.5 by 4.25 inches and is perfect for your standard A2 size card fronts. I have this wood grain border which measures a quarter of an inch on all four sides. It has this gorgeous wood grain texture which would get debossed on all of your card fronts. And we have this beautiful diamond wire towards the center of this cover plate die. I love the intrinsic thin diamond pattern on this cover plate die. Here you will see I have a 100 pound cardstock where, uh, which is cut to 5.5 by 4 and quarter inches. That's the standard for an A2 size card front. This background will completely cover the card front. Well, whenever I'm using a cover plate die, I always like to secure my cardstock using some temporary tape. Or here, in this case, I'm using some painter's tape. If you notice that the tape you're using here is way too tacky or, well, the glue is too sticky, you can either press it against your hand or up your sleeve just to make it less tacky so that it doesn't tear the paper after you run it through your die cutting machine. Well, the first technique I show here is the basic one. I ran the cover plate die along with the white cardstock into my die cutting machine and well take a look at this gorgeous panel that would completely cover a card front. You could use any color cardstock instead of a white cardstock that I'm using here or you could even use an ink blended background panel. For my next technique I will be mimicking an embossing folder. Did you know that you could use your cover plate dies or any of your big or small metal dies to create an embossed look on your card front? Well, I'm using my Cricut Cuttlebug machine. So, well, when I usually do die cutting, I have my A plate over which I have the flexible rubber plate and then I have the two B plates. I sandwich the paper and the die between the two B plates. Well, um, that's exactly what I did for the first die cut panel. Well, now since we are going to emboss the panel, instead of sandwiching the paper and the dies between the B plates, I will place them on this flexible rubber mat instead. The rubber mat will ensure that the die does not cut through the paper and we get a perfect embossed impression. Well, every die cutting machine is different so I definitely recommend you to check your packaging or your instruction manual that came with your die cutting machine to know the combination of plates that you could use for this technique. I will carefully peel out the painter's tape and you can see how gorgeous this panel looks. Here is a comparison between the embossed panel and the completely die cut panel. Who would tell that both these panels came from the same background cover plate die? Moving on to the third technique. Well, here again, I am using the cover plate die to create an embossed panel. But before that, we will create a window for this panel. For that, I am using a circle die to cut out a window from this 100 pound white a2 size cardstock. I will be cutting my window before I go ahead and do the embossing. Because if we do it the other way around, that is if I emboss the panel first and then cut out the window, it will flatten out this beautiful raised portion of the embossed panel. When you run the panel through your die cutting machine to cut a window, all of that raised part of the embossed panel will be flattened out and you will no longer be left with any of that beautiful texture. So here I am using a circle die from one of the nested circle die sets. Once I have cut the circle, I will repeat the same embossing technique by placing the panel over the plate. 
I could either use a circle as is or like I did here, I placed the circle back in its place and ran it through my die cutting machine, sandwiching the cover plate and the cardstock between the rubber mat and the B plate. Another way that I use this background is where I uh, did the same exact thing but well I chopped off the grain, uh, wood grain border edge from all four sides. So here I have a card panel with an embossed impression of the cover plate die that measures three and a half by four three quarter inches. Now that we have multiple card fronts ready, let's create some beautiful cards. But before that, let me show you the stamp and the die set that I'll be using today. Here is the Gobble Gobble 4x6 stamp set which comes with coordinating die sets. Included in this set are three turkey images, a variety of greetings and three accessory items. I love how adorable the turkeys look, especially the one with a box that says, not a turkey. To save time while I'm creating cards, I like to have a bunch of stamped and colored images ready to go. Here I use my black pigmenting and black embossing powder to stamp these images and then colored them using alcohol markers. I also stamped all of the sentiments using the same black pigmenting and the black embossing powder. I use the coordinating dice to cut out all of these images. The best part about this set is that the coordinating dies not only cut out the turkeys and the leaves and the pumpkins, but also the little sentiments. I love having die sets which cut out the sentiments. It makes my work a lot more convenient since I'm not very good at fuzzy cutting and sometimes instead of having a simple sentiment strip, I like to cut around my sentiments and pop it up on my card along with the focal point. This gobble gobble stamp and die combo uh, is a very unique and versatile set and I would definitely recommend this set for your Thanksgiving projects. We have one turkey holding a banner that could perfectly fit in those little tiny sentiments like uh, well eat ham, eat chicken, don't pick me, go vegan and I love vegetarians. Well, if you take a closer look at these sentiments that I've die cut using the coordinating dies, you will see that it has a very thin outline on all around the letters of the sentiment. These dies are definitely very intricate and detailed. Here, I have used 100 pound white cardstock for all of my stamping today. If you want to double up on your sentiment strips, you could use the same coordinating dies to cut out a bunch of those using the same white cardstock and stack them over each other for some extra dimension. Well, let us now start creating our cards. Since we have all of our die cut frames ready, all we have to do is arrange the stamped and colored images and place the appropriate sentiments over the card front. For my first card, I will be using the die cut frame. I will be keeping the simple white and not adding any color to the frame. I went ahead and stuck the frame using some barely art glue onto a top folding green color note card. You could also turn this into a shaker card by adding some foam tape around the quarter inch wood grain border. But today I chose to keep it simple and instead of creating a shaker card, I will have a flat card and will also use the embossed circle die cut piece to ground my focal point, which is this adorable little turkey. Now I chose the sentiment gobble till you wobble, so it was kind of understood that my turkey should also wobble. So here I am using an action wobble on my turkey. Instead of centering the turkey on the circle, I placed it slightly towards the left hand corner and well then towards the right hand corner of the circle, I placed the leaf and the pumpkin. And using some foam tape, I adhered the sentiment just beside my turkey. For some shine and sparkle to our card, I used Spectrum Noir Glitter Brush Pen on all of those images that you see on the circle. I embellished the card front using some orange creamsicle pearl mix by Cat Scrappiness. Here's a look at the finished card. I love how all the elements came in together. Well, like I mentioned before, you could also turn this into a shaker card or keep it as simple as we did here. Moving on to card number two. Well, this here is definitely a shaker card. Remember the window that we created? Well, we did use the embossed circle for our first card. Now we have the window here. I'll be using the same green color note card, but for my window, I have this gorgeous pattern paper by Cat Scrappiness. It's a, a six by six inch paper pad, which perfectly coordinates with the Gobble Gobble stamp set. I got, uh, I cut out a four by four inch piece of this maroon paper with all these beautiful leaves. This is slightly bigger than my window. 
I adhered a sheet of acetate using some strong double-sided tape on the back of my window. Well, to make it a shaker, we definitely need some dimension for our shaker elements to move around freely. For that, I have foam tape, which I generously uh, placed all around the edges of my window, making sure there are no gaps through which the shaker elements could fall out. For my shaker elements, I added autumn pumpkin sprinkles, yellow confetti sprinkles, platinum solid round confetti sequins, all of which are by Cat Scrappiness, into the shaker window. I then placed the 4x4 inch pattern paper over the window and peeled off the rest of the foam tape and adhered this panel onto the top folding green color note card. Now that my die cut window shaker that is the card front is ready, we can place the turkey and the sentiment. For this card, I will be using the turkey holding the banner which says, don't take me. To finish off my card, I used my Spectrum Noir glitter brush pen to add sparkle to both the turkey and the sentiment strip and we can call this card done. I love how the little shaker bits inside the window look and well, if you look closely, you will also be able to see all the fall leaves on the pattern paper through the window. For card number three, I will be using this panel where I cut out the wood grain border. This panel is now three and a half by four three quarter inches. Well, you can either mat this using a pattern paper to create a border around it or you could directly stick it onto a colored cardstock which will leave a thicker margin or around this embossed panel. Again, I'm using a pattern paper from the Gobble Gobble paper pad. I have this beautiful zigzag line paper pad which I will be cutting down to 4 by 5 and quarter inches. I stuck the embossed panel onto the pattern paper using some strong double sided tape. And then for my focal point, I have this turkey with a little box on his head that says not a turkey. I popped it up using some foam tape and then added the little pumpkins and the acorn nut and finished off the card with the happy Thanksgiving sentiment strip. Here's a look at my finished card and I love how simple and beautiful this card turned out. I also went ahead and used my Spectrum Noir glitter brush pen to add shine and sparkle to all of the images on our card front. Last and final card for today. Well, here I don't have a Thanksgiving card, but instead I have a sympathy card. I'll be using one of the same backgrounds that we created in the beginning of the video. I have this panel which I embossed using the cover plate die. Well, to keep my sympathy card very simple, all I need is a sentiment strip and a focal point. I'm using the autumn foliage die set by Cat Scrappiness and the simple sentiments uh, stamp set along with its coordinating die. This stamp set is so versatile and well, it has a bunch of sentiments that would go perfectly for so many occasions. We have thinking of you, hello friend, birthday wishes, best day ever, best wishes with heartfelt sympathy and lots more. Just like I have my uh, stamped and colored and die cut pieces ready to go, same uh, well here also I like to mass produce my sentiments and die cut pieces. Here I have a bunch of sentiments stamped with black pigmenting and heat embossed using embossing powder. The coordinating die helps cut out all of those pieces perfectly with uh, into those tiny little sentiment strips. I like to store them in the same stamp pocket. As far as the autumn foliage die set is concerned, I cut a bunch of these die cut pieces using some 100 pound white cardstock and colored them using alcohol markers. I store them in these tiny containers and they are ready to go whenever I'm creating a project. For my card today, I will be selecting one of these autumn leaves and pairing it up with the heartfelt sympathy sentiment strip. I glued the autumn leaf using some liquid glue directly onto the embossed background panel and then popped up the sentiment strip using a thin strip of foam tape. I mounted this entire card pa uh, panel onto a green color top folding note card. I finished off by using my Spectrum Noir glitter brush pen on the leaf and the sentiment strip and embellished it using some jade green solid round confetti sequins by Cat Scrappiness. Here's a look at the finished card. I love how simple and elegant this card looks. This could easily be mass produced not just to create sympathy cards but also using other sentiments you could create birthday cards, thank you cards or even encouragement cards and so many more. Here's a look at all of the cards that we created today. It's fun to see how one single product can be used in so many different ways. 
Here I have a complete die cut background with an embossed circle with an action warble focal point. Next we created a shaker card using the embossed panel which was created using the cover plate die. Third we created a card where we cut down our embossed card for, uh, front and used it to create a simple thanksgiving card. And last but not the least we created a very simple and elegant sympathy card using the same embossed background. I had so much fun creating these cards for you guys and I hope you had fun watching the video and got inspired. I will leave a link down in the description box below for all the supplies that I have used in today's video. Check out the Cat Scrappiness channel for more fun videos and card making tutorials. I would love for you to become a subscriber to the channel and if you do subscribe or are already a subscriber, please make sure to hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the next time we post. Hit the like button and let us know in the comments down below if you have any ideas or suggestions. Also, if you'd like to share your creations, please tag us on Instagram at Cat Scrappiness. There's a link to that in the description box below. Thank you again for joining me today. Until next time, stay safe.